So now let's go ahead and look at the logic within the drag gesture. So we have at first, what we're doing is we're calculating the additional magnification that the drag is proposing. And just gotta remember that nothing is actually uh, changing on the user interface unless ma active magnification is set to a new value. And nothing is finalized until final magnification is set equal to active magnification. So even though on ended we change final equal to active, active would have never changed unless these conditions were met. So uh, let's look here. So we're essentially creating a working magnification that we're going to use purely for calculation purposes. And then the logic from here to here serves one purpose. And that purpose essentially is to be used down here to determine the following. It's trying to answer the question, if I were to bring this image here and now I try to expand it, would my expansion essentially cause this viewfinder to extend past the bounds? And the answer is yes, so it just doesn't allow it to happen. Do so you see what I'm saying there? So let's go back. And you'll see that essentially what we're saying is we're saying if the working magnification is less than 1 or greater than 0.4, and these are arbitrary numbers. These are just what I wanted to set the limits to. Well, 1 is not an arbitrary number. 1 means that you've expanded to the maximal size. But working magnification 0.4, that was pretty much just me saying, I don't want you to get any smaller than 0.4 right there. Because just I just wanted to set some limit, and I chose 0.4. So uh, from there, I essentially said, if we're within these bounds, then I want you to double check and make sure that the magnification won't pull our viewfinder outside the bounds of the image. And if we're outside of these bounds, you can just set it equal to either 1 or 0.4, respectively. Um, and then underneath here, essentially what we're doing is you got to remember that uh, the offset, technically speaking, while we while we change the size of this thing, like if I go from here and change its size to this, its center has now shifted to the right and down as well. So we need to account for that, and that's what this is doing. We have offset size um, essentially changing. Or, sorry, I should say offset size is a new value, and we're changing the active offset to be equal to the final offset plus this new offset size. Okay. Uh, and then we have current, these are just prints, these are for your purposes, this is debugging. And then we have on ended, and we have drag in, and we're just setting the, uh, the final magnification and offset equal to the active one, meaning we're finalizing um, our move so that we're ready for the next user interaction. And so that's it for that. Now let's go ahead and look up at this image cropping view. There's really not a whole lot to it. And image cropping view. I'm going to copy it over and we'll talk about it. So image cropping view essentially is everything else we see. So I'm going to copy that into our project, save it. So image cropping view is just <clears throat> everything else on that screen. So the black, the buttons, all that stuff. And we start by having the image width and image height. And those things are going to be equal to uh, the size of this actual image right here. Uh, it's currently set to 0. And that's because we'll set its size later. And then we have uh, binding var shown. That is just being used as a binding. And that essentially is letting us hide and show this uh, sheet programmatically. And then we have the cropping offset and cropping magnification. These are state variables. Um, and they're essentially just tracking the cropping and magnification, the offset and magnification, sorry. We have uh, the image that is being passed forward. That's this outer image. And then we have, of course, a bound cropped image uh, of type UI image. And what that means is that any, ch any changes we make to it, any values that are changed for this cropped image, of course, are going to be changed wherever it was actually initially instantiated not as a binding, meaning that when we use image cropping view later in content view, that any change we make to this um, variable is going to also be changed inside the, um, the partner to this binding inside the content view. And you'll see what we mean in a moment. So that's that. Now I'm going to fold some code here just to kind of give you a feel for what we're looking at. That should be plenty of code. So you'll see that we have a Z stack here, OK? So if when you go left and right over these, you can actually see down here that that's the other end of that. And first thing, we have is a black background. And then under that, we or on top of that, I should say, we have a VStack. That VStack is containing all this other stuff. So first, we have a spacer up top here. And I don't technically need this because I'm presenting this as a sheet. But if I was showing you this view not as a sheet, meaning that it extends under the status bar, what I'm doing is I'm accounting for that height. That's essentially using these safe area layouts. Uh, just to make sure that I don't accidentally have this junk underneath that um, the notch. 
And then after that, I have an H stack, and that H stack has the cancel, this text, and the done. The cancel will just uh, toggle, so it'll toggle the uh, shown equal to false. And we have a spacer, and then we have the thing in the center saying we need, uh, you may need to reselect, it's just kind of like a notification. Um, and why did I have that? I had that because this is part of a bigger pro project where I also had filters. Um, and then we have the done button. And that done button is actually going to contain the logic. The action of the done button is the logic that creates that new image. Boom, right there. So let's look inside of that. And quite frankly, I, I took a lot of this code. You know, I had to um, mix and match different tutorials and different uh, snippets of code I found on the internet. But essentially, this is what I ended up coming up with. Um, and it's not really too crazy. It's not a whole lot of lines, but this is all the logic you need to create an image. And you'll see that we're spending uh, all this time. First, we're uh, creating a CG image of the UI image. Uh, we're taking into account the size of... Uh, essentially, we're, we're taking into account the fact that in the process of cropping, we're dealing with offsets relative to the size, but the actual image is a lot bigger. So we're kind of getting the ratio of differences there. That's what the scalar is. Um, then, essentially, if you keep going down, you can see that this X offset and the Y offset what this, the logic inside of here looks a little confusing, but what it is, it's changing the fact that what we're dealing with visually, this UI is based off of offsetting from the center to the left, right, up, and down. However, when you're dealing with actually, um, when you're actually dealing with offsetting the cropping, you have to remember that the cropping, technically, or the origin of the crop starts at the top left, kind of like if you were to click and drag down. That's how that works. Okay, and so... Let's go back to the code. And then we come over here and you have the scale dim. So this is essentially using um, using the this, va this value that we had up here to figure out how our magnification interplays with the difference between the actual image size and the image size on this screen so that we don't lose any quality. And then we create uh, the CG image with a new cropping and we set the uh, bound UI image equal to this new image if this if led is successful, and then we hide it. And that's pretty much it. So that's how that button works. So I'm gonna fold that uh, H stack now so we can kind of see the rest of it. Then um, underneath that, we have a spacer, and then, so there's a spacer from here to here. And then we have another Z stack, and that Z stack contains the image, which is the underlying image. And then on top of that is that viewfinder view, which is everything we just created. That's kind of the, the surrounding views. That's this grid, the button, all that kind of stuff that we just spent forever creating. Then I put a padding and of course a spacer. The one unique thing about this image here is that you'll see I have an overlay of a geometry reader. This geometry reader is not actually visible. It's serving one purpose. Uh, I'm using the instance of geometry reader, so this geo, and I'm essentially saying that this closure needs to return in any view, but I don't actually want to view anything. I'm using this purely for calculation purposes so that any view we're going to be returning just has an empty view. So you can't actually see this geometry reader. But what it's doing is we're saying where it's allowing by doing this right here, this would be expecting a view builder purely inside this closure if it weren't for the fact that I was putting a return. And that's why I put a return. So whenever you try to put logic in a view builder, it says, oh, you can't be putting logic here. This is purely for building views. But when you use a return, it lets you put logic prior to the return of whatever you're expecting. So it let me put all this logic that I wanted. I put an asynchronous, um, essentially asynchronously, I'm setting the image width and image height equal to the size of the geometry size, width, and height. And the whole point of that is that geometry reader ex expands to take the entire size of whatever it, it can. So if we already set finite sizes for the image, then geometry reader will expand exactly to that size. And that is how I'm able to keep that calculation present. And so then uh, we have the padding, the spacer, and, and all that comes down to is this stuff down here. Okay, the padding is going from, it's like about 10 pixels here, 10 pixels here, 10 to the right, 10 to the left. Maybe it's 15, there's a default value. Uh, and then the spacer underneath. And that is pretty much it. So that's it for this page. And then the last thing we need is inside of content view. Remember, we never actually built that yet. But inside of content view, I'm gonna copy and paste the code. It's pretty straightforward as well. I'm just gonna copy and paste all that, okay? And you'll see that um, 
You'll see that right here. There we go. So you'll see that we have the um, original image, which is just a, a very static variable. It's going to be equal to the UI image named food. Something behind the scenes that I did was I added my food image to the assets and I named it food. You got to make sure that it's named properly. Um, ideally, you'd be using this in a very dynamic setting, in which case you're not using assets. You actually have, you know, maybe things you're grabbing from the internet, you're cropping and re-uploading or something like that, or you're grabbing from the photo library. And underneath that, we have the cropped image, which is a, um, well, essentially that cropped image is equal to a UI. It's, it's going to be of type UI image, but it's an optional, meaning that its default value is nil unless told otherwise. And then this cropper shown is going to be equal to false. And that is just a Boolean that's going to be um, determining whether or not the sheet is shown. So uh, we had a little bit there. Sorry about that. I accidentally got rid of that. So um, that's why that wasn't building. So you can, this error will go away in just a moment. So then inside the body of this view, we have a, a VStack. And inside this VStack, it, it's really nothing special. It's just a spacer. And then underneath that, you have a text that says original. Underneath that, you have an image. Uh, and that image is just going to contain the original image. That should never change. Then you have a spacer followed by, essentially, we're saying if cropped image is no longer nil, meaning a value is set for cropped image, which the only time that happens is inside the cropping interface. So if it's no longer nil, then you can put the text that says crop to put the new cropped image in a spacer. And of course, underneath that, we have a button that is always present that allows you to go to the, the um, sheet or the cropping view. And it does that essentially by toggling the Boolean. And that Boolean will, of course, open the sheet, which is down here. And that is going to contain the image cropping view, which we just spent forever making. And then you can see that we're passing uh, forward the cropper shown variable so that it can dismiss itself programmatically. So that is pretty much everything. You'll see that if I click play, it will work. Go to cropper, boom, grab something. Let's get this line, click done. There it is. All right, and that's all. So if you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. And of course, this code will be available, but it may take a day or two for me to upload the code. Um, yeah, thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.